Hey guys, uh, in this video I'll just be rabbiting on into the microphone. Uh, basically the reason being is that I just don't feel very happy at the moment. I haven't felt happy pretty much all week. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's got something to do with my stage of life. I'm in my early 40s. Uh, I haven't got a full-time job or a career to speak about. Uh, I don't have a house. I rent an old unit. <laughs> just things don't feel like I'm... just feels like I'm not achieving very much in my life I suppose. I do have a wife and two small kids, so that's something to be grateful for, I suppose. I do have a casual job out at the local university. Uh, it's only two days a week, though, and I help out students with you know, assignments and so on. It's an okay job. It pays okay, but it's not enough to become rich or anything like that. Um, and plus, it's not something I'd like to do for the rest of my life. I've got this YouTube channel that brings me in a whopping $150 a month. Not exactly good money. It's actually bordering on slave labour if you ask me. I suppose four years ago when I started this channel, I thought that I'd be much more successful than I am today, um, but it just didn't happen. I suppose it's my style. Most people, well, I guess YouTube just don't push my videos very much. Often they're fairly controversial. Often YouTube punish me actually. They cancel my videos or demonetize me or whatever else, right? Uh, it's possible that my videos are too structured. Maybe that's why people don't watch them very much. Or maybe it's just the topics I choose. I'm not sure. Uh, I suppose if I jumped off buildings and landed in big piles of pillows, or if I, uh, you know, went and pranked people, or played Minecraft or Grand Theft Auto all day long and show you all my exploits, then maybe I would have been successful. Um, some of the most successful YouTubers actually are just people who open presents or play with toys or, you know, watch TV or just do mundane shit. But here I am trying to do some serious stuff and what ends up happening? I end up not getting, not becoming very successful. <laughs> oh well, that's just where I am I suppose. Well, consequently, I've really felt pressure recently from lots of people actually to get a full-time job. I've had to be people who told me if you want to get a mortgage, if you want to get a house and all that, go out and get a full-time job. So I've really been looking into it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what job I'll do. I thought a government job might be a good one, so I looked online and started uh, thinking about what sort of jobs I might be interested in. There's like federal police jobs and uh, ASIO and uh, just the state police even. I even contemplated joining the military. Um, I've always contemplated joining the army for some reason as an officer. I actually was accepted as an officer uh, in the early 2000s in the Air Force, but I decided to uh, not do that at that stage. Even though I'm in my early 40s, I could still become an officer. That's not an issue. Um, but the problem being is that I'd have to move to Canberra. I'm up here in sunny Queensland and I can't exactly move my entire family down to Canberra. And even if I did, they wouldn't see me very often because in uh, officer school, basically, you have to live in the college and you only get uh, a couple of weeks off here and there. So I'd probably be going months at a time without seeing my family, which is just not something I want to do. So I've pretty much cancelled that idea. Plus, if I did become an officer, I could be sent overseas to some hellhole and just, you know, it's obviously something that's not very family friendly. So I, yeah, I've given up on that idea. Uh, I was contemplating going and doing some other government job like uh, Centrelink, working for Centrelink, believe it or not. I was honestly going to apply for that this afternoon. Now, you might be asking, why the hell would I work for Centrelink? Well, one reason is that throughout the uh, coronavirus pandemic, Centrelink workers always had a job. It's almost recession-proof, and the reason being is that when uh, times are tough, people need money, and that means Centrelink are busier than ever. So yeah, Centrelink is probably a pretty good option for me, to be fair. Um, I probably not like it very much, I don't suppose, and I don't know if it'd be a very fulfilling sort of job, but um, it is a job that would be always there, so I'll contemplate it. Back when I was a boy, uh, back when I was in primary school, I really wanted to become a doctor. I mean, it was a dream I had for at least a few years, perhaps about five or six years. But then I got to uh, high school, I remember quite clearly, um, and I saw a boy get injured. Uh, he was playing discus, I think, and somehow he, um, the, the discus that he threw sort of hit his knee, and he split open his knee, and um, all this blood came out everywhere. It was gushing out everywhere. And I remember the teacher racing over and putting her hands over his knee and this blood just, it must have been an arterial wound, I don't know. But there's just this red blood flying everywhere and it's just a horror show. And I remember they raced some teachers down and to get a first aid kit and an ambulance came and all the rest of it. And from what I understand, the boy was lucky to be alive and I thought, 
geez, from a disco, disco. I mean, discus uh, incident. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, after seeing all that, I just didn't want to become a doctor anymore. As the years went on, um, I became very good at maths and science, and many of my teachers commented on that I should do something in that sort of field. And one of those career advisors came to school one day with the latest sort of uh, computer system to type punch in all your uh, interests and what you're good at and all the rest of it. And the result that I got spat out was an engineer, an electrical engineer, and that was something that I was kind of interested in too. So um, yeah, my teachers were pushing for me to study engineering and um, to go to university and uh, become an electrical engineer and whatever. But then I got to university. I applied to a university and got in as an engineer and I got to university and I just absolutely hated it. I was very good at it. I did really well in my first semester. Most, mostly the first semester was just like um, basic principles like maths and calculus and electrical technology and so on. I was good at it all. I just hated it. I just didn't want to do it. And I thought, how boring is this? I forced myself through another semester and it just got worse. I just thought, oh, what am I doing this for? This is a waste of my life. So finally, I quit uni, took six months or 12 months off, and I just became a lawnmower. I went around literally knocking on people's doors and asking if they wanted their lawns mowed, and I went and did that for a while, and I quite enjoyed that, just out in the sun, pushing a mower around, using a whippersnipper, and I was really good at it. I was just good at maintaining a lawn. I made it look really good, and people really appreciated what I did, and I didn't get much money for it. It was only like $30 a lawn or something, but it was something that I really enjoyed. But then I started thinking real life and thinking, oh, can I be a lawnmower all my life? And I thought, well, not really, <laughs> unless I join like Jim's Mowing or whatever and get my own franchise and all the rest of it. But then I had the sudden urge to go back to uni. I decided that I wanted to study physics, which was something that I was always interested in and I was good at it in high school. So I went and got my physics degree and I thought, oh yeah, this is great, I love this and I'll go get a job. One year went by. I was looking everywhere. I was applying for jobs everywhere. Not a single science job I could find. The only sort of job that came in even close was working for a herbal uh, remedy company that created sort of these little hermit, these herb, oh, I can't even say it, these herbal tinctures. And I just didn't want to do it. And I thought it's not, it's not even similar to what I'm doing. So I resigned in the fact that I was just never going to find a science job in Australia. It just wasn't going to happen. Unless I had a PhD in physics, then what, what could I do? Lots of people recommended that I go back to get my uh, uh, education degree on top of my physics, and therefore I could become a, an, a physics teacher or a science teacher. I just didn't feel like doing it, honestly. I just didn't want to go work in high school. And I thought I wanted to do something much more uh, interesting, I suppose. I'm not saying that teaching isn't an interesting job, but I just didn't want to do it at the time. But then as a lark, I applied for this English teaching job in Japan, just on the internet at the time. And um, I thought there was no way that I could get it. I thought there's no way in hell they're going to give a guy with no experience and no teaching qualifications a job in, in Japan. Uh, they offered me an interview in Brisbane, so I drove down to Brisbane with my friends and before the interview I actually went to the Forex Brewery to have a, a bit of a tour of that and the thing is, one of my friends, he was uh, driving, so he couldn't drink his two free beers. And then my other friend, he was sick from some other bug or whatever, so he couldn't drink his two beers. So I ended up having my two beers, plus their four beers, plus I had an extra beer from another friend who couldn't drink down here, only wanted one or whatever. So I had seven beers before my job interview. I went to the job interview completely, well, I wasn't, I wasn't pissed, but I was certainly tipsy, and I just thought it was a bit of fun and I thought there's no chance they're going to give me this job. I had an interview with this fairly uptight looking sort of guy and I was just, just rabbiting on like I am, much like I am right now I suppose, except I was a bit drunker. Um, a couple of weeks went past and I got a phone call telling me that I was successful in my uh, job interview and that they were offering me a job in Japan. And I was like, what the hell? I thought maybe I need to get drunk more often, I don't know. <laughs> to be fair, I haven't drunk anything this year and I haven't drunk anything well, pretty much for the last 18 months, I suppose. But maybe I should drink more. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I spent years in Japan uh, teaching over there and I ended up going to China where I met my wife. And um, I came back to study again because I was again getting into a bit of a depressed state thinking, oh, what am I doing with my life? I don't want to be forever working in China and so on. And I wasn't getting paid very much money in China anyway. And I wasn't treated very well. 
Um, so I went back and did a master's in computing and became a programmer. I uh, did that for two years and found it inter- in just intolerable, I suppose. It's just working in the corporate environment just drives me crazy and I just can't see myself doing that anymore. Um, so it's a bit strange that I'm contemplating going and working for Centrelink. That would be kind of the same sort of insanity, I suppose. So anyway, yeah, this video is just a complete schmozzle, I know. I'm just rabbiting on. I just didn't feel in a very good mood today, and I'm still trying to sort out what the hell I'm going to do with myself. Even this afternoon, I'm a bit confused. What am I going to do? Should I apply for jobs? Should I just... Uh, I don't know. I just don't know what to do with myself at the moment. Maybe it's I'm going through a bit of a midlife crisis. I don't know. Um, this morning I went to watch my son run in his cross country race and I know he's not, he's not very good at uh, running. He's quite small. Uh, he's not very good at sports in general, but I don't want to be one of those parents that go, oh, you got, you got to run, you got to try harder, you got to do this. I mean, I hated that when I was a kid. I don't want my, I don't want, sorry, I mean, I don't want to do that to my children. I would feel terrible uh, making them feel bad about something that they're, that they're just not naturally very good at. So I just let him do what he did and he was walking half the way and whatever, fine. It just happened that the lady who was standing next to me happened to be the mother of the kid who came first. Now, I know her from previous years and so on, and she was like, go, go, Sammy. Just say his name, Sammy. Go, Sammy, go on. Yes, Sammy, well done, well done. And she's jumping up and down and taking a video and just so happy that her son... Um, came first again. He comes first every year. He's just a natural born athlete. I don't know how he does it. He he went out sprinting in the first hundred meters. He was literally sprinting faster than like the adults. And then he just kept running at that speed. I thought, what the, this guy's insane. How can he do it? He's only an eight year old boy. He's just got this insane endurance or something. He just kept sprinting. He sprinted for like 1500 meters. I thought, what the hell? This guy's going to become an Olympiad, surely. And then his mum, even even when he was running the home stretch, his mum was still going, come on, go faster, go faster. Don't look at me, go faster. It was just unbelievable. And, I, and then about three minutes later, my son was still in the race. The lady asked me, oh, so where's your son? Is, is he not at school today? Of course he is. <laughs> yes, why would I be here watching a race that my son isn't at school today? Of course he was in the race. He just hadn't come around the, the home stretch yet. And then she saw him coming and everyone else was preparing the next race. And she goes, oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, he must be feeling not very well today. No, that's just how he runs. He doesn't run very fast. So I felt bad about that, of course. I felt like, oh, gosh, I mean, here I am just... I mean, I don't know how I feel, honestly. I don't want to force my son to be good at something that he's not good at or make him feel bad about something that he just can't control. It just I was just in a bad mood, I think. And it doesn't help that I've got screaming parents next to me carrying on about how good their children are. <laughs> Anyway, I walked home and uh, feeling not very happy with myself again and uh, wondering, well, what the hell am I going to do with my life? Oh, gosh. Anyway, this little pamphlet started fluttering across the street. It was just blowing in the wind. It says, I've got it in my hand right now. It's just a rough patch. Don't downplay what's playing on your mind. And it's basically advertising um, (laughs) mental health and, you know, look after your own mental health and all the rest of it. So maybe that's uh, sort of the summary of my day today. It's just a rough patch. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 